Hi, welcome to video three of our series of videos where we're trying to give you an introduction to AI and how to use it with a special focus on education from the ground up. I'm Ethan Mollick, a professor at Wharton who's been studying AI. And I'm Lina Mollick, and I study AI and interactive pedagogy at the Wharton School of the University of Pennsylvania. In this video, we're going to talk to you about how to prompt and how to tell the AI exactly what you'd like it to do and how to do so effectively. The first thing to remember is that you want to tell the AI who it is. The reason you want to do that is because the AI has been trained on billions of documents. Telling it who it is gives it the right context from which to start. Once you tell the AI who it is, the second thing to do is to give the AI very clear instructions about what you want it to do. You have to remember that the AI doesn't know you and doesn't know any of your context. So the more context you give it, the more effective it can be. The third thing to remember is to always give AI examples and steps. If you have a specific project you'd like it to take on, if you have specific directions that you'd like to give it, giving it examples helps it learn what you want, and giving it steps helps it think step by step and will do a more effective job for you. So let's see how this works in practice. So I'm going to show you how to construct a prompt sort of step by step. There are two important caveats that you have to know before we do this. First off, don't follow this exactly. Prompting isn't magic. 80% of prompting is about experience, and prompting is just getting easier with each generation of these models. So this is not a magical formula. You can actually experiment, and the more you use AI, the more you'll find out what's good or bad at it, and how to make it do what you'd like, and even just ask the AI to help you. Say, I want to accomplish this task. What should I ask you? It will help you with that. So that's the first thing is this isn't magical. There is not a technical programming language here. This is a conversation with the AI. And the second is, as we'll talk about it in a little bit, prompting is just a piece of this. So getting the right perfect prompt is less important than interacting with the AI, which we'll talk to you after we show you how to create a prompt. So with that said, let's talk about how to create a good first prompt. So let's work on a prompt together and see how we can make it better. We're going to start with something basic and build it out. For this particular use case, we're going to use GPT-4 and ChatGPT, which as we discussed last time, is one of a series of foundational models you can use. So you could also do this in Microsoft Bing, which in its creative mode uses ChatGPT-4, the same model. Or you can use it Google's Bard, which works a little bit differently. But we're going to just use GPT-4 for this. Again, the prompting works fairly similarly across different AI models. So let's start with an example. Example. Let's say we wanted to write me a paragraph about why group work is important. And so GPT-4 is a very powerful model. It's a little bit slow. It will produce the results here that we need here about this. So that is a good prompt, and it's coming up with a perfectly fine essay. But you'll notice it doesn't know what context to use what perspective to write this from. So the first thing that we can start to do is we can add context and perspective. So we can say, act like an experienced teacher. Write a paragraph about why group work is important. And you'll notice that the entire context of the conversation changes because now it's talking about pedagogy and it's talking about from a teacher's perspective. We haven't made it into a teacher. This is not magic, but we've given it context to work in and a perspective to take. And you'll see it uses that perspective throughout. Now, we can make this even more advanced by adding in constraints, by telling it exactly what we want to see. So we could say that um, act like an experienced teacher, write a paragraph about why group work is important, make the writing engaging but smart, to pick a style. And by the way, if you don't know what style to use, you can paste in your favorite text into any of these AIs and ask it to describe that text to you and then use that description when you're giving it constraints. We might also want to say, uh, make sure there is an example. And again, you can see I'm just using normal human text to do this. There's nothing magical here. And say, now it's being a little bit too engaging and fun. It's saying, group work, my dear scholars, is a vital cornerstone of education. So maybe we think that's too flowery. We're learning as we go with this prompt. We'll talk more about how you revise it as you go along. But you can see we get a better, more constrained, more interesting piece of writing as a result of this. So now we can do something a little bit different. 
For this example, we're gonna switch over to a tool that has access to the internet, which is Bing. Bing is using in creative mode, the purple mode, the exact same model as ChatGPT's GPT-4, but it has inter an internet connection. So we're, here we're going to paste in the exact same thing that we had before. And we're gonna add a additional qualifier. We're going to say, look up the academic research on group work. Now this would not work in GPT that's not connected to the internet, but it works here well in Bing. So let's try this with look up the academic research and group of work. And what you'll see is Bing is now going to actually do that for us here. So it's now looking up, doing an actual web search to find the answer, and we're gonna get a better result. You'll also notice that Bing will provide sources as a result. These sources are not always 100% correct. You'll wanna, again, check the work to make sure there's no hallucinations. But I think you can see how we get better results now here that are both including the example, including the context, but now including actual academic research. We could go one step further with this by adding ourselves into this model. We wanted to make particular points. We're smart, we're experts. We don't want the AI to be the expert, so we can tell it, make the following points. So now, to make the AI not just produce random work, we wanna actually insert what we know into the prompt, and we give it instructions that are more explicit. So in this case, we wanted to make the following points, that group work allows students to support each other, but group work also needs to be carefully designed. So up till now, there's been none of us in the AI, which is of course kind of worrying because you'd like to make sure that as humans, we're in the loop that we are making, playing a role in the creation of this content. So it's really important to add that in. So we're gonna add in a couple of points that we know that we wanna make sure the AI covers so it doesn't just make up its own information. We're gonna say that we want it to include that group work allows students to support each other and that group work needs to be carefully designed. And then when we do this prompt, the AI will do what it did before, which is look up the information like we requested. It'll still do the work it did before from the context of a teacher with the same tone, but you'll notice now including the points that we wanted to include. As opposed to just being AI work, now it's starting to be integrated work between human and AI. Sometimes it's called being a centaur, half person, half horse. And that's what we're seeing here. There's one even more advanced technique that we can include, which research shows makes the AI more effective. And this is a little bit trickier, but it is asking the AI to think step by step. So remember, the AI is just trying to guess what the next word is in a series of words. And asking to think step by step allows it to create content that it can then look at and build from. So we could say, follow these steps. Outline the paragraph. Improve the outline. Write the paragraph. So now we're giving it steps to follow. This step-by-step -step thinking, sometimes called chain of thought thinking, is a useful way to get the AI to stay on task and also for us to check the output as we go along to make sure that it's good. So you can see it's outlining the paragraph it's gonna do first. It's giving us the sentences it's gonna make, the points it's gonna make, the example it's gonna include, which we all asked for, and now it's gonna improve the outline. So it's gonna go back and you can see it's gonna actually already revising what it's doing. So asking it to look back at its own work often gets much better output as a result. And you can see it's actually doing a better transition, it's doing better points, uh, and it's gonna then produce the final content here, which is the actual end uh, goal that we wanted. And so you can see how the sophistication level increases, the quality level increases, and we can check the results to see what goes wrong, if anything does. So I've just spent a bunch of time showing you how to do a prompt, but this is actually not the right way to optimally use the AI. You don't wanna try and create the world's perfect prompt. Instead, you wanna work with it interactively. And to work with it interactively, you have to push back. And this is really where the magic happens. For instance, you could ask it to expand. I like the second point. Can you expand on that? And you can ask it to edit. I don't like the example you used in this paragraph. Why don't you change the example? In addition, you can also ask it to include more of your thinking. You can add a point about how group work requires you as a teacher to choose whether teams have the same ability level. And all of this, including your own thinking, your own interaction, improves the paragraph. Uh, if you look back at the beginning of the paragraph to the final output, you can see that you, in the loop, guiding the AI, you being in charge and giving it direction, vastly improves the work. Sometimes the AI can get into a loop. You may need to clear the memory uh, by hitting, for instance, in Bing on new topic where the broom is and just start again. 
Each time you prompt the AI, it'll give you a different output. And so you have to take the lead. So because you have to take the lead, that means you have to do many different kinds of tasks that aren't normally part of writing. Not only are you thinking about whether the writing is good or bad, but you are also kind of acting as an editor, you're selecting what work you like, you're figuring out whether it's heading in the right direction, you're even instructing the AI like a teacher, which is part of why teachers are often very good at working with AI and prompting it to do things. So an important thing to note about all this is the AI will give you different answers every time. There's randomness built into all of these systems, and so when you give it one prompt, you may get different outputs from different systems at different times, or even the same system in different ways. It's something you can actually take advantage of. So you could say something like, give me five examples of a particular paragraph, and it will give you five different examples, and you could pick the one that you like. You could tell them to do it in very different styles and give very different outcomes. But sometimes you'll have to hit refresh, clear the memory on the system, and try again. So it's about multiple efforts, multiple attempts to try uh, the same prompt, multiple experiments with you giving feedback to get a prompt response that you like. So prompting becomes more art than science, which brings us back to the point of experience. This is not magic. It is about practicing until you get good at this. It's about trying the AI for the task that you want to use it for. It's about treating it a bit like a human, again, even though it's not a human, and giving it uh, feedback and instructions about what you want to see have happen. In the next set of videos, we're going to dive into how to use this in a classroom, both as a teacher and as a student.